Ace is jacked, I got my bullets and diamonds and I ain't holding back I'm all in, yeah, I'm gonna kick it Pocket rockets and ticket, if you got what it takes You can play high stakes I'm all in I'm These all ladies in. ain't ladies unless they your ladies It's your hand on a monster, that's what it takes And if you got what it takes, you can play high stakes Previously on High Stakes Poker Phil Hellmuth and Antonio Esfandiari, two world-renowned tournament players, joined our cash game and saw their money vanish into thin air. At least I can say I lost the biggest part of my life. Barry Greenstein returned and showed the table absolutely no mercy. Point. And Daniel Nugrano hit a new low after losing another huge hand to Doyle Brunson. Tonight, some familiar faces return to the table. Will the brat and the magician be able to turn their luck around? And will Kid Poker yes. finally be able to climb his way out of his $725,000 hole? All this and more tonight from the Golden Nugget Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. We're playing high stakes poker. Hey, everybody, AJ Benzi here with poker analyst Gabe Kaplan. Gabe, we've seen Phil Helmuth lose $150,000 without winning a single hand. Phil got a couple of bad beats. He made a few wrong decisions. And then he started steaming. And voila, all of a sudden, just like that, he stuck $150,000. What about the players making it clear they don't respect Phil's cash game? Well, Phil is not as bad as they say he is, and Phil is not as good as he <laughs> says he is. He is the best self-promoter in poker, and we're seeing a little resentment here. But it's interesting. Look what's happening in this game. Daniel Legrano stuck $725,000. Mm. Antonio, the magician, has played great, mm. but he's losing $100,000. We have an assemblage of the best cash game players in the world, and who are we talking about? <laughs> Phil Helmuth. Phil Helmuth. So there is a method to his madness. Well, let's see if he remains the center of attention. And Sean Sheik will get things started. He's down about $70,000 for the game. He picks up pocket eights and just calls. Sean Sheik continues to talk a big game, but play it very close to the vest. Doesn't raise with his eights. Freddie Deems won about 80 grand. 35 more. Raising 35. He raises to 4,100 with ace five off suit. Freddie Deems showing a little speed here. Catches the Doyle Brunson with a pretty big hand. Ace King off suit. He's up 40,000 for the game. And he just calls here. I think that's because Doyle's trying to disguise his hand a little bit. Doesn't want anyone to know he's got Ace King. It falls back more. to Shiki. He calls the raise, so we're three handed to the flop. Flop comes 6 10 3 with two clubs. Sean Shiki <clears throat> is still in the lead here. His eights have held up. But he checks. Okay. A lot of players would have bet there just to see if their eights were any good. But not our hero, Sean Sheiky. <laughs> Turn cards, queen of diamonds. Everybody's checked. This gives Doyle a inside straight draw. Sean checks. Check. One more. So it's checked. Everybody checks again. Checks to the river, 10 of spades, pairing the board. Everybody's playing his hand kind of conservative. It yeah. is the first hand, but yeah. it is a conservative play on the part of all these players. Freddie, who raised, didn't try to take the pot at any point. Now, Sean has bet 5,000, and Doyle calls with ace high. And Sean made a play. I'm proud of you, hey, Sean. there he goes. You bet your eights. <laughs> Sean Sheiky takes down the hand, winning a pot worth about $24,000. Huh? Six times. I've had eights and sixes, like... Over 10 times the last three days. I've misplayed every single one of them. <laughs> well, this is honest. <laughs> exactly. Better lucky than good sometimes. We move to the next hand. Would you look at this? Brunson catches a couple aces. And this time I'm sure he's going to be raising <laughs> here. I think so. Yes, he does. $3,000. And now Daniel Negrano's got the eights, and he calls, but Doyle Brunson's got the tools for those eights. This time he doesn't have ace king, he's got the I bullets. I can check, I guess. Please, another die, please. Check's good. Oh, boy. Wow, look at this, the flop comes <laughs> king, eight, three, and Doyle is gonna need a toolbox now. <laughs> he's gonna need uh, an ace or running clubs to win this hand, and Doyle is in big trouble because that's a very deceptive flop. And he just bet $7,000 in the Daniel set of eights. Plus 20. 20 and Negrano raises the $27,000. $20,000 20 more for Doyle to call. Now Doyle realizes he might be beat. It's possible. 
but he probably thinks he has the best hand. There's all sorts of hands that Daniel could have. He could have a king of clubs with another club. Doyle's probably going to raise here. Daniel says, please raise, Big <laughs> Papa. Put that money in there, Big Papa. Let me win something. Yeah, he needs this. Thing. Raise it. You going all in? Please? Yeah. <laughs> 145.7. 145.7? Yeah. I call. Okay. Daniel says, I call. If you have three kings, I'm going through the roof. <laughs> and now the players show their cards. And Doyle is going to need uh, an ace or two clubs. And now he's down to the ace. Needs an ace on the river. And Daniel takes all of Doyle's First money away. Power. And if he wins, like, three, four more pots like that, will probably be even. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to freeze the ball. Doyle said I was trying to freeze the ball. I was in the prevent wow. defense. That's why I didn't raise with the ace king, but I had to play those aces and look what happened. Degrano wins a pot worth over three hundred and fifty two thousand dollars, but he's still down almost six hundred grand for the game. And Daniel Negrano <laughs> says there is a heaven after all. We'll find that out. Welcome back to the Golden Nugget in downtown Vegas. We're playing high stakes poker. Yeah. Well, Doyle Brunson's bought back into the game for another hundred grand. In case you missed it, he put everything he had on pocket aces, and Negrano beat him with a set of eights. Ali of Ezra's won one hundred fifty thousand dollars so far. He raises the twenty-seven hundred on Queen Ten offsuit. My buddy Eli. All right. Before you never used to call me. Sick. By the way, there was aces crack in three hand. Henry, how many more minutes? Do you guys know? Is there a floor, man? How many more minutes? Before we stop playing. Flop seven nine king. Oh, we never stopped. Wow, Antonio swapped the set of nines. Ellie has an inside straight draw. He needs I a jack, but he's good at hitting jacks <laughs> yeah. against Antonio. Turn cards to ten. They both checked on the flop. It's gonna be no more checking from Antonio. 4, 4, Call. He bets forty two hundred. Ellie quickly calls. Still needs that jack for a straight. He's got a pair of tens now. Go to the river. Five of diamonds. No help for Ellie. Thirteen. Call. Antonio bets thirteen thousand. And Chips. Ellie quickly calls. <laughs> it was the right amount, and Ellie thought Antonio might have been out of line there. I give you some of the money back. I appreciate it. Calling with ace queen high. Ellie says he called with ace queen high. We know that's not true. Ace, queen, high. I don't know why he's saying it. Daniel doesn't believe it. <laughs> he lost everything in Chinese. Knocked the table over. Poor oh, fellow. <laughs> better worry about poor daddy. I just dumped your inheritance off. <laughs> <laughs> <No problem. laughs> Sorry. Don't bother me. Anybody hurt you. <laughs> that was a good line. <laughs> that's, that's probably about all the time I was going to get, too. Well, that's the end of it, too. 22. 22 straight. Barry Greenstein well, raised the 2200 with King 10 of hearts. Early, Barry was way down for the game, but has miraculously turned things around, and he's sitting about even right now. Shiki calls with Queen 10 off suit. Shiki gambling a little bit here. <laughs> I know. And Freddie Deeb's yeah. in the hand with an 8 5 off suit. 8 5 off suit's a playing hand for a player like Freddie Deeb. Ain't good. And Brunson saves his son a little inheritance money. So three players remain. Flop comes Queen 8 6 with two clubs. Sean has flopped top pair, Freddie has flopped middle pair, Barry's missed the flop, and Freddie's going to lead out and bet with middle nice pair here. $5,000 from Deeb. Barry quickly releases, and let's see <laughs> what Mr. Sheiky does with top <laughs> pair here. Come on, Sean. And he calls, so we're heads up to the turn at 9 of clubs. Now, Sean has also got a straight draw. Freddie's still got the eights, and he checks. He checks. Come on, let's go, Come on, Sean. Sean. Bet. Now's bet. the time. That's it. Let it out. Bet. <laughs> Cheeky bets $11,000. All right. And Freddie quickly releases. But at least Sean bet. Wasn't scared of the third club. Played a little poker there. 
Sean Shiki caught some cards and raked in 28 grand. Coming up next, the change of regime as three new players hit the trenches. We're playing high stakes poker. And the next hand's dealt with Daniel Negron who under the gun. He won that monster pot earlier that sent Doyle Brunson out for a rebuy. Now Negron raises the 2,500 with King Jack of Clubs. Is uh, Jerry or Sam coming? And fast Freddie Deep calls with 10 of the diamonds. Excuse me, don't call it. Sam's a missing action. Everyone else is out, so it's Negrano and Deep to the flop. Okay, I'm gonna try something Who's new with you, sir. Oh. Four for you. Four in the dark? Four in the dark. Wow. Wow. Now these guys like What's to play with each other, already, yeah. and Daniel's bet 4,000 before seeing the flop. Look at this. Yep. Freddie Deep has <laughs> flopped a straight flush draw, four to a straight flush, but then Daniel's flopped three to a raw flush. <laughs> But Freddie's got a really big hand here. Nice. And Daniel has bet 4,000 already. And Freddie's aware that Daniel bet before he saw the flop. So Freddie's going to probably have to raise here. He's got a monster hand, monster draw. Yeah. Flush draw or straight draw? Or set? But two Freddy. pair. Two pair? Sixes and sevens? Wow. It's pretty cold. But two aces. Two aces are good. What is it? Ten more. Deep raises the fourteen thousand dollars, and Daniel only has king high, but he does not want Freddie Deep to take the play away from him. So it's possible he might call here. I doubt it, though. Yeah, call. So we'll head to the turn. I'm wrong once again. <laughs> Daniel calls with king high. He still really has the best tan right now <laughs> with King High. Ace of Diamond indeed makes his flush. Not only does he make the flush, but an ace is another card that Daniel didn't want to see. Yeah. I got him. Looks like this round is going to go to Freddie Deep. 22. 22,000 from Freddie. And Daniel immediately releases. Right. But it was fun watching those two guys try and outsmart each other. Freddie just got the hand that time. Thank you. And Doyle Brunson, Good luck, guys. bowing out of the game. Doyle Brunson's the biggest name in poker. The combination of tournament success and side game success that he's had has been unequaled by anyone. And he's still a great player. I think he's 72 years old. I play with him on a regular basis, and he's still uh, certainly one of the best players in the world. Doyle Brunson, my hat's off to him. He's, he's just an amazing guy. He, he has all the records in poker and um, all the respect. Doyle is a legend. He is one of the reasons why I'm where I am today, because of his book. He's, he's the first one, really, who figured out how to play No Limit Hold'em, and then he put it into words. Um, by that, because of the fact that he put it into words, he made it so much easier for guys like me to improve my game a lot quicker. And there's so many young players today that owe Doyle a debt of gratitude because they learned how to play No Limit Hold'em through his, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, as you will, um, playing on the road and, you know, back alley games. And, you know, the stories he has to tell are just, you know, you think of poker today and you think about it back then and you're like, wow, I mean, you know, we are really lucky to be in an environment that we are today compared to, you know, what Doyle must have had to go through back then. Well, when I first started playing poker, you were almost a second-class citizen, you know. I mean, people looked down on you. They thought that you were involved in a lot of illegal activities. And while poker playing was illegal back where I was from, you know, we got arrested, we got robbed, we got cheated. But, uh, you know, poker has evolved because of the TV programs just like this one. Uh, and, you know, the, the media has, you know, they've made uh, stars out of the poker players. And some of the guys think that they're worth a lot more than they are. You know, it's, it's like I say, we're still just a bunch of poker players. And it was great watching the Hall of Famer play with us. 25. Action to Freddie Deeb as we start the next hand. He's picked up a couple aces and raises the 2,500. Shiki calls with a king, queen of diamonds. So we're heads up to the flop. Four king eight with two clubs. Bad flop for Sean Shiki. D bets five thousand dollars. Sure. Give me the twenty-five plus the four white. 
Level five rug, whatever you got. So is that 21? There is 10. 21, 1 and 20. Shiki raises the 15,000, which is the right move. Sean Shiki's making the right move at the wrong time. <laughs> I wonder if it's going through Freddie Deeb's mind that this is exactly the kind of flop <laughs> that Doyle had against Daniel right. when Doyle had aces and Daniel flopped 3 8. And Freddie Deeb just calls. Subtle head to the turn. Deuce of hearts. That's got to make both players feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Sean really feels he has the best hand now. Okay. Freddie checks. Cheeky bets 20 grand. Now the pot's over 56,000. I would expect Freddie to raise here. Maybe that hand with Doyle and Daniel is still going through his mind. Maybe he feels that Sean wouldn't be this aggressive unless he had a set. Freddie just calls, so we're down to the river card. Very surprising to me. The king! Sean has got <laughs> super <laughs> lucky in this hand. Wow. Good. very unusual hand knowing the two players Sean was aggressive he actually played his hand 15. correctly now she gives 15,000 huh? Freddie decided not to raise on the flop and on the turn and now he realizes he could be in trouble the only thing he can really beat here is a bluff how much money in the pot 20 and uh, 30 is 50 40 there's 100 in there huh And Sean has put out a please call me bet of $15,000. <laughs> Pocket aces continue not to hold at this table. Just 15, baby. Probably flop a set of ace like Danny did, huh? That's, that's the uh, going thing about against the aces. You know? Sean's quiet. Sean's not <laughs> saying anything. I know. 15 is so cheap. <laughs> Whole table's quiet. There's all that money out there. Hope for a queen. Two queens maybe. I don't think you've got the two queens. You probably got lucky on the last card in but... Right, you got it, Freddy. <laughs> I would really be impressed if Freddy D would throw this hand away. I know you got it, but I gotta pay too much money out there. D finally oh, calls. Sean shows him the king. I thought you flopped a set. You did have the aces, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And Freddie Deeb explains why he played the hand that way. He really thought that Sean had flopped a set. Now, Shiki's running hot. Caught cards again. He wins another hand, raking in over $106,000, making him just about even for the game. I saved all that 50000 I think. Good hand. So aces fall again. Two aces. This time to trip kings. Freddie Deeb's huh? got 50 grand I'll left, but he'll hand. now leave the game winning 125 he grand overall. He, he was in the hand the whole way along here. Yeah, that's that's the the mess, There's Jerry Buss, followed by Bob Thompson, who's going to try and set the record for roping and tying an NBA <laughs> owner. <laughs> this is quality time. We've never had quality time. Doctor! Yeah. Not together. Doctor. Jerry! <laughs> Doctor. Jerry won in his first visit nice, to our game. Uh, I mean, uh, too bad he was losing and then uh, got a big hand and played it well. Yep. Did you yeah. need a comeback last He's time? back for more. You, you did, right? You won a <laughs> yeah, five? Yeah, I did. Did you end up winning? Yeah. yeah. You doubled up. I remember you, weren't, you didn't win a hand until the very end. 16. Yeah, it was unbelievable. unbelievable. Did you play in this last night, Jerry? No, the first night. It was a nice game against well, All it takes oh, yeah. is one hand in this game to come out ahead. Action's on Barry Greenstein. He raises the 2200 with King-10 offsuit. Phil Helmuth calls with 8-6 offsuit. Jerry, how much Good luck, gentlemen. Negrano's also in with Queen Nine offsuit. Right. Okay. Bondiari folds, so we'll have three-player action. 
Well, you better come with me. I'd love to go with you. That yeah, well, worked. Antonio invited himself to the basketball <laughs> game, and Jerry Buss <laughs> obliged. It was easy. Look at this. Phil Hellmuth has flopped three sixes. <laughs> if he loses this hand, we're going to see a meltdown. It'll make Three Mile Island look like kids play. <laughs> We're at the beautiful Golden Nugget Hotel and Casino. We're playing high-stakes poker. We've got three players in the hand. Phil Helmuth flopped three sixes while Barry Greenstein's paired his 10 and now bets 4,500. And Phil Helmuth has got the hand he has been waiting oh, for. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to slow play it because there's two spades out there. Raise it. Raise. 20 more. 20,000 more. He raises to 24.5. Okay, I'm all in. You what? All, all in. I call. Ray's all in. So Greenstein's all in, and Phil immediately calls with his last 63,100 bucks. And no, he does not do the in-your-face call. No. Hold on, don't, don't he just that. puts his money in the pot. Uh, let me see what I got here. What do you want to wait for? You, they said I could get insurance, right? Who? You could run twice. No, no, you can get insurance. Later. I was told I could get insurance. Like what do you want insurance from? Barry's gonna give me. Just, we'll just give me one second. Relax, Sean. <laughs> oh, brother. Phil wants insurance, which is something we haven't yeah, done so far in three. the cash three. game. And Sean and Daniel were against it, but Barry said, uh, "Stay out of it, guys. I want to do it." And what he's gonna do here is, Phil Helmuth has 91% equity in this hand, and Barry's agreed to give him 80% of the pot, regardless of what comes. So the hand is basically over. Barry's going to get 20% of the pot, and Phil's going to get 80%. Kind of it's a way of insuring your hand against the draw. I took insurance out. to insure for 100000 so I owe him. Uh, we'll figure it out later. And like a good neighbor, Greenstein was there <laughs> with a mutual of Greenstein. <laughs> Wimpy? He's not a gambler, bro. He's going to his money, right? He ain't no gambler. Kid, I'm rich. I want to stay that way. I'm rich. <laughs> Straight out of game. Well, you didn't get rich playing poker. That's I'm a rich, man. Well, are you the second richest guy at the table? Well, I know Jerry's the richest. Well, that's a given. Any idea? Uh, Jerry is the man. Uh, I could be a boy more than six to one. Todd Brunson's back in the game. We're gonna, we're He'll take over his father's away, seat. I'm just trying to give him some money. He's bought right in for a hundred grand. And, well, what do you think it is? He can hit king king. Raise he raises the twenty-two hundred with four three hearts. Nine to one. Todd Brunson comes in the game. He's anxious to start playing. Raises it up with a three four hearts. And after winning the last ten. Helm was down about 70 grand overall. <laughs> As Fondieri calls well, with an ace eight of yes, diamonds. Daniel, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> but insurance there was not bad for me because. Only uh, money. Brunson and his Fondieri square off. Five ace Fondieri. four with two hearts. Like As Fondieri's paired his ace. And Todd Brunson has flopped oh, a so pair of fours and an inside straight flush draw. This Fondieri check, Brunson bet 4,400. 10% juice is not the worst, so. See, it's a good thing to raise it up with a 3-4 hearts. <laughs> like 1% juice. Phil Ivey, now Phil Ivey would give me 10% insurance all day. In fact, 5%. All I got to do is call him and say, here's the situation. Of course you would. He's a smart guy. Turn cards yeah, a queen of clubs. Take money anytime. <laughs> You're giving well, you it out. Step up and make check, check. Rivers of four clubs. Like Look at this. <laughs> Todd Brunson was thinking about the deuce of hearts, and he wound up catching Come three on, fours. Not bad. I've never and now Antonio thinks that his aces no, really are the is. best hand. He puts in 6,200. I don't believe you, Dan. That's serious. You're so smart. I know that you don't believe that. <laughs> And Brunson raises 20 more. And that's going to really surprise Antonio. 20,000. You can see it on his face there. He was not expecting to get raised after the check check on the turn. Yep. Antonio just doesn't know what to make of this hand. Todd not showing anything. You have a four or you bluff him? The way Antonio is figuring this hand is that either Todd has a four or he's bluffing. 
The only other possibility would be that Todd also has a weak ace. A6, A7, Ace-8, just like Antonio has, realizes it's a split pot and is trying to get Antonio Set out. Pepper for Sorry, guys. Ace. One second. Okay. Mr. Bus would like Dr. Pepper. Doctor, to you and me. Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> Dr. Pepper would be nice. Sure. Let me get a clock, okay? I don't want to keep taking time. Sorry. Jeez. <laughs> <the clock. laughs> oh, Antonio clock. just called the oh, clock dude. on himself. <laughs> clock him. Clock him. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I've seen this happen a couple of times before, and both times when the players called clocks on themselves, they wound up throwing the hand away. Well, let's see what he does. And the waitress is saying, did he just call a clock on himself? <laughs> he throws it away. Yeah. Antonio took a long time to make his decision, but he made the correct decision. So Todd Brunson sits down and takes down over $46,000. We're back playing more high stakes poker. And Jennifer Harmon's back for another run. She replaces Elia Lesra. Last time she won 40 grand before leaving. Phil so Helmuth starts this hand. He raises to 3,500 with ace four off suit. Ambitious raise with an ace four off suit. Let's do the seven. And Daniel Negrano with an ace ten off suit doubles it. Makes it seven thousand. Jerry, Jerry, why you bugging? You might have Jack, so I just call. Jacks? Jack ten? Claiming ten? I check. I check. I bet ten thousand. Bill Hamuth calls. I bet ten thousand. I already said it. Promise. And Daniel said he bet 10,000 before the flop came down. Wow. Phil checked. Daniel said, I bet 10,000. And he put the 10,000 in, and he's flopped top two pair. Jeez. Boy, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> and Phil's got aces. This could set Phil off. Cool. And Phil cannot get away from his aces. I checked. So the ground already bet 10 grand, and Helmuth calls. Turn calls a deuce of clubs. Phil is checked. Wow. And the ground bet's 25 grand. 25, though. 25. And I think Daniel has a pretty good feel of where Phil is at in this hand, and Phil has no <laughs> idea where Daniel's at. <laughs> yeah. It's worth the $100 ante just for me to watch you guys play. <laughs> Get an intimate seat. It's like sitting in the front row of the Lakers, right? Those seats cost two thousand. This one could cost Those more. Those front row seats cost how much? Jack's seat cost two thousand. Each game? How many games? <laughs> no, for the season, <laughs> Sean. Sean's obviously not a hoop fan. Wow. Yeah, but they charge when it comes playoffs and good games. They charge ten thousand a seat. Twenty-five. Why so much, Daniel? Now, what Phil's got to decide here is, did Daniel say 10,000 before the flop, flop nothing, bluff on the flop, and now continue to bluff on the turn? Jeez. I've been there and flopped the box. The box is, I'll tell you a different story. I've never been to the game, let alone a box, but it's fun. So many pretty periods. No professional poker player wants to be bluffed on television. I really believe if this hand were not on television, yeah, Phil would throw it away. All right, Danny, you got me. That's a long time ago. I think you have points. Really? Helmuth calls. Not only does he call, but he Plus tells Daniel basically where he's at, that he's got a weak ace. <clears throat> Rivers a seven of clubs. Phil gave away his hand. Now he checks. He's already told Daniel that he's got aces. No, stop at 10. Stop at 10. Daniel is just about as comfortable as he can be. Yeah. Just figuring out what the right amount to bet here is. What would Phil possibly call? 40. 
40. And the ground will feel the right amount's $40,000. Now the pot's over 125 grand. Phil did not want to see that. Mm. Is Mr. Daniel Negrano bluffing all the way in this hand? <laughs> I think Phil realizes that Daniel would not bet if he had jacks or queens right now. So Daniel's either bluffing or Daniel's got him. Helm with calls. Sees the bad news. Yep. And Negrano takes a big bite out of Phil Helmuth's wallet. He rakes in 165,700 bucks. Phil looked a little silly in that hand, and we mm. might have ignition here. Yeah. These people I like. It's a musical. Yeah, yeah, you have an app. Can you guy re-raise me? I didn't think he'd re-raise me with ace ten. Couldn't can put him on that hand. Ace and ten couldn't put him on that and he re-raised me. I knew it was weak before the flop, that's all I knew. Why they destroyed me so far, these m****s. There's no clue in these thoughts either. It's sick. Good hand, Daniel. Good betting. We're at the Golden Nugget playing high stakes poker. I'd say Phil Helmuth took that loss quite well. And all the cash game players noticed it too. A lot of tournament players uh, make millions and millions of dollars and they come play with us and at the end of the year they're break even or lose money for the year. They just can't, uh, their talents just didn't kind of do kind of a one trick pony and when they try and spread out and play real poker they have a hard time. Well that's one man's opinion. Whatever you want. Jennifer Harmon's back in our game. Six four of spades. She calls. Helmuth will try again with an A seven of spades. Antonio raises the fifty six hundred on ten five offsuit. Antonio's got plans in this hand. He feels the timing is right for him to raise with nothing. Maybe get lucky on the flop, but if not, try and take the flop away. Mm -hmm. He likes that he's in the hand with Jennifer and Phil. Well, he's not in the hand with Jennifer anymore. She threw the 6 4 spades away. But he likes being in the hand with Phil because he knows Phil is steaming right now. <laughs> Don't go on tilt, Phil. Youth calls. I'm a little tilted already. I can see that. <laughs> but you never know. I might have the best hand here. Flops king, deuce eight. And nobody's flopped anything here. Advantage Antonio. <laughs> he started out trying to steal his pot. Double check on the count. On this? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Can I play with him? And he's still going to try and steal his pot, in my opinion, but he's acting like he's got a big hand here. Yeah. He's trying to convince Phil that he's got a big hand, and he's acting like he doesn't have a big hand. <laughs> they say it takes a real man to wear pink. You look good in it. Thank you. I'm not kidding. I know you're not kidding. I believe you. And Antonio bets 10,500. 10 times. I really don't see any way that Phil can call in my, in my suit. I got my or even make a play at this spot yeah. and raise. That's a wrap on my suit. He's still burning from the last hand with Daniel. No, they just sat, you know, I could. And he throws it away. Queen 10? Four hundred thousand yeah. in my jeans. Like 10 jeans. And Antonio shows him the 10 <laughs> 5. I'm trying to get some on. And Antonio does his Gene Simmons impression. Again, it seems like the whole table's after Phil. Uh, it's like no. a kill Phil no. table. <laughs> I just saw Uma oh. Thurman in the background. I knew it, too. When you when you open your mouth before the flop, just like Daniel, I knew. That's twice I didn't act, though. Plus, it plus $40,000 for the hey. seats. And Johnny Chan is back wearing one of his creations. This one, uh, Terry Cloth and Paisley, looks like. You don't look like Sammy. 
from the Johnny Chan collection. Might also be wearing one of his 10 World Series bracelets. Oh, you got to get serious right now. <laughs> well, Johnny Chan does have 10 World Series of poker bracelets. And he sits down with 100 grand. Helmuth raised to 3,000 with pocket fours. Negrano call with ace, ten of spades. Johnny Chan comes with a lot of accoutrement. <laughs> yes. Brunson's in with ace, king, big slick. And the flop's 3-8 queen with two hearts. Todd didn't raise with ace, king before the flop and checks here. <clears throat> Bill's fours are still the best hand. And he bets 4,500. 45, right? Did Johnny play yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Daniel calls. Daniel calls <laughs> with Ace High and a backdoor flush draw. Brett, that's the new guy. Yeah, he just wants to be in a hand with Phil. Oh, yeah. Turn cards, five of clubs. Check. How much you got left? Not much, man. Not much. Is that 22 or something? Now, Antonio just took a pot away from Phil. Daniel looks like he's going to try and do the same thing. $8,000 from Daniel. 8, now there's three over cards. Mm. Phil's got a pair of fours. There's a five and eight and a queen there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to. Phil calls. Phil's not going to be pushed around. <laughs> Do you see what I see? Nine of hearts on the river. Now, if Daniel were going for a flush and bluffing on the turn, he's made his flush. Check. I can't beat two eights. Two fours. Wow, That's they both check. Phil's going to win the pot with a pair of fours. All right, Helmuth takes down 35000 Daniel lost heart there. When that nine of hearts came, Phil best. would have had to put him on a hand. In the heart came, I gave up. I wish you went to giving up. I, I probably would have. I don't know, but I, would, I like the challenge. Mm. Tough call. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I called off all that money against you with a, just an ace, so. So Phil Helmuth's in a better mood for the moment. It's High Stakes Poker coming to you from the Golden Nugget in Las Vegas. Phil Helmuth is under the gun in a good mood as we start this next hand. His four is held up. He's feeling pretty good. He raises the 1800 with a six off suit. I have to just like that. Hi, Cole. Ooh, Round of calls with deuces. Shouldn't have just called, man. Why? Why? <coughs> Re raise would have been a little bit better play for you. No, 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 not necessarily. Now you defined your hand. I did? Yeah. You know what I have? You don't know what I have. Well, I know I have the best hand. <laughs> you sure? I re raise you all the time with the worst hand, for sure. Greenstein's Maybe also with fours. Hey, flops 8 5 4. Greenstein flops Man, a set. So Phil's got an inside straight draw. He checks. Oh. It looks like uh, uh, Daniel's. 3,000. Gonna bet 3,000 here with his deuces. And look at Mr. Greenstein, <laughs> studying. <laughs> what do I have here? I got two fours in my hand. There's a four on the board. Yeah. I guess that makes three fours. <laughs> I guess I'll call. <laughs> and Phil Helmuth calls with his inside straight draw. Yeah, Cards the king of hearts. You too. Barry Checks wants Phil or Daniel to bet, but they don't. They don't accommodate him. River of Jack of Diamonds. And Barry cannot slow play his three fours anymore. 20. 20 grand for Greenstein. Is that a concert tonight in Las Vegas, though? You too. Eh? And Phil's talking about what's playing tonight in Las Vegas. <laughs> I had you beat. <laughs> Daniel was right. Daniel had the second best hand. Two deuces again. There you go. Barry gave it his best effort, but there was no way he could have won any more money in that hand. Oh, I didn't say it was a bad beat. I said I made a bad call. Right. I'm not going to ask you, Phil. I know you stuck, so. How can you tell? I heard, about, I heard you about your aces. I look at your stack. I'm not a dummy. No, I'm at 210. <laughs> He said you had a dead top. Oh, yeah, you know what it yeah, was? Yeah. When he walked in, there were like tables so laying on the ground out there <laughs> in the lobby. <laughs> Jennifer Harmon raises to 1,800 with eight deuce offsuit. 
think she watched Antonio <laughs> play against Phil, but this time Phil has a hand. Not bad, Phil. Phil just called with his queen. Johnny Chan threw his hand away. Chan's out, so they all head to the flop. Check it. Phil checked blind. 5, 10, 6 on the flop. And now Jennifer's probably got a bet here because she started out just like Antonio with intentions of buying this hand. She bets 2,500. Phil's thinking about what to do here. He just calls. Jennifer has no hand. She's trying to convince Phil she has a hand. Phil has a hand. He's trying to convince <laughs> Jennifer he has no hand. Turn cards nine of diamonds. And Phil checks. Waiting for Jennifer to bet here. And she checks. River cards uh. seven. Jennifer's made a straight. Phil slow played himself into oblivion <laughs> here. And for the first time in his hand, he bets. Queens. Jennifer just calls, shows Phil her straight. Phil can't believe it. What happened here? Who raised the foot flop? You did? He just called? <clears throat> What'd you nice have? Hand. Eight deuce? You got two suits, though. Eight deuce off suit? Wow. This is the girl you think's the best no limit holding player. I just want <laughs> <laughs> And you bet all your money on. I just want you to remember that. I'm okay with it. My money's in a good spot. <laughs> Okay, Phil played that hand very strange. He didn't bet till the river when he was beat. AJ, the pros have accomplished something with their criticism. They've actually thrown Phil off his usual game. Yeah. Phil usually plays in tournaments where he's playing against Joe Public, and he's doing the intimidating, <laughs> and he's doing the criticizing, and now he's being intimidated. And what it's made him do is he's trying to get too cute. He's trying to disguise his hands too much. What about Jennifer Harmon raising with an eight-deuce offsuit? Jennifer was making a play against her conservative image, and she has accomplished two things with that. One, she showed everybody that she's capable of, of raising with absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. and she's added a little more fuel to that Helmuth rocket ship. <laughs> NASA has officially started the countdown. <laughs> the space station has been alerted. <laughs> Helmuth is ready to blast off. You've got to admit, this is not your typical poker game. Next time on High Stakes Poker, Phil Helmuth continues to battle the table, but can he turn things around? Also, Daniel Lugrano keeps fighting his way back into the black, taking money from any and everyone at the table. But will it be too little too late? And Jennifer Harmon finally shows why she's considered poker's most dangerous woman. The game heats up and things get personal. All next time on High Stakes Poker.